This week on Shift Points, I talk you through our new strange engineering brake system for our 55 Chevy drag car, and we find out, did we actually save any weight by going with this new stuff? Thank you guys for joining. We started this project. We found a piece of brass, he's gonna take all right, everyone, we are back working on the 55 drag car this week. Uh, I know we've been C10 square body trucking the past few weeks and kind of working on that stuff, but we were kind of waiting on some parts to come in for this car, and we finally had some come in. So we definitely picked up a couple boxes from uh, Strange Engineering. That was who we decided to go with with the brake parts for this car. Uh, a couple reasons behind that, main, I mean, the main reason, we're running strange axles, running strange shocks, we're running strange uh, uh, struts up front, uh, using a lot of those components. And for those that don't know, man, sometimes you try and go and mix and match parts and components and try and get this and make it fit that, there's a lot of headache that can come with that. So the main reason we went with this was just kind of ease of use. Everything should bolt up for the most part. And at the end of the day, the strange stuff that we've had, that we have done so far, is top of the line stuff. I mean, it's good stuff. And uh, so we went with a little bit uh, of upgraded parts compared to what we had. So let's jump in here. Let's look at some of the parts that came and compare it to the old stuff that we already had on here. All right, let's look at the front brakes first. So uh, on the front of this thing, we were running uh, two piston Willwood calipers. Uh, and their rotors as well. So let's look at, let's check one of those out real quick. So you can see this guy right here. So that's how, this is the, the rotor that was on it. Uh, we were talking about it, I assume this was considered a two piece rotor as well because the rotor itself bolts to the hub, um, but it's completely separate. So you can see that it's just the rotor itself and then that's bolting up to the hub. Now if we go over here and look at the strange stuff that we got, this, piece right here is actually the hub and the rotor itself are independent of each other so there's the hub really really nice piece and then this is the rotor itself and instead of bolting together this actually uses a giant c-clip and that's what actually gets this thing into be a two-piece rotor so you have the center section here and you have the actual rotor itself the the hat I guess uh, if you will and then the rotor itself. So these are the strange dynamic drive mount. Uh, there's the part number that we're running right there. So that's the rotor. And then, like I said, then that hub there as well. This kit came with everything that we're gonna end up needing. It's got the hub rotor. It's got new lug studs. It's got everything that we need to make this work. Comes with new bearings, seals, which we're probably gonna go with a different seal. Uh, some low drag seals, um, got hubcaps, all that stuff, dust covers, uh, and all the bolts and everything you need here to kind of make this kit happen. So this is a big upgrade, looks really nice. But the big thing going from this rotor, or going from that rotor to this rotor, that's not as massive as what we're gonna do here when we get to the caliper. So you can see this two piston caliper is a, really, is a good wheel wood product nothing wrong with this at all but we wanted to kind of upgrade this and get it ourselves a little bit better and so that's where we came into this strange four piston caliper that's going to go on the front as well so this guy again there's the part number of this unit and like i said we're going to have double the stopping force we've been discussing it we're definitely going to have to um, potentially have to run like a proportion valve or something to make sure we get this dialed in so we don't try and lock the front tire whenever we're braking but we definitely want to have as good of brakes as we possibly can on this guy uh, of course because it's just the safest thing to do so this rotor and com this rotor and caliper combination right there uh, is replacing the one right here and it is going to be a pretty major upgrade the other reason that we kind of decided to go with a new caliper instead of doing this one, we could have rebuilt that caliper. They make kits for it and stuff like that, and it probably would have worked just fine. The caliper itself is just set here on a shelf for 
you know, 30 years now. So we wanted to kind of get that upgraded uh, and make sure that we didn't have an issue with it. The last thing you want to have an issue with is your brakes whenever you're trying to go as fast as we're trying to go. The next couple things I want to talk about that we got from Strange as well, we got a new master cylinder. You guys know that we are that we are going to use a master cylinder that mounts in the floor. If we rotate around here, you can see it back there. Boop, we got one up there. Again, that uh, master cylinder has sat here for a really long time. Just don't 100% trust it, don't want to have any issues. This was, I think, like 60 bucks. I mean, I think it's worth the 60 bucks to go ahead and get this and get a new fresh one put in the car. So that is another thing that we've got. This, it appears, and we hope, that everything's going to work the same with this one that is going on with that one. So it's going to mount exactly the same. It's a Chrysler-style uh, master cylinder. It should mount exactly into it. This diameter right here is exactly the same as the one we have in here. And the other thing is when we pop this plastic reservoir off, our fittings that we made that you guys have seen us, that we that you saw us make, those should plug right into this same master cylinder and all of that's going to make our remote reservoir possible. So then kind of leads me into our remote reservoir. So this reservoir right here is a, another really nice dual um, dual outlet reservoir for our brake system. This guy's going to end up getting mounted up here onto the firewall somewhere. If we walk over here, this is going to end up mounted somewhere up here potentially. We haven't 100% decided where that's going to be. But anyway, that's going to be here, 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 somewhere where it's easy accessible so that we can add brake fluid to this thing. And then from this reservoir, we'll run the lines down in some direction here. And then those are going to end up into these fittings here so that we can uh, use this remote reservoir. If you don't remember why we did that, is to get the big plastic reservoir out from under our feet, make sure that all that stuff's good. It's also going to allow us to put brake fluid into this thing easier with this reservoir up here on the firewall versus having to try and do it into the floor. And then like I said, inside of this thing, it is a dual reservoir. So I don't know if we can ever see it on camera, but if I take the lid off of it here, if you look down in there, you can see there is like a reservoir inside of this reservoir. We probably need like a flashlight or something to see it better. But there's a reservoir down inside of this and it allows us to uh, allows us to run it one line off of each fitting that we've already made here and have it plumb to the rear and to the front brakes. And another reason for running that remote reservoir uh, Dad reminded me after I turned the camera off was we wouldn't have to run any sort of residual valves in the brakes uh, applying some pressure to the brake pads all the time. We've worked really hard to get all the drag out of this car and we didn't want to put those residual valves in there to where that was happening, you know, dragging all the time. So that's all the reasons why we went that remote reservoir way. So now let's jump into the rear brakes and talk about those. If you remember, we did some measuring when we first started on the car and to figure out what axle housing ends that we had on this car. They are old Pontiac style uh, ends onto this car. And that is something you have to know before you order your rear brake kit. Uh, you have to know what sort of flange you have on the axle housing so that you can get the exact one that you need to bolt it up with. And that's because these, uh, these new mounting brackets here, these really nice aluminum mounting brackets, and then we already have some bolsters here just holding it up in place. And that's kind of showing you uh, how this thing mounts up. Now I don't have the axle in right now, but if we pull this off, you can see there is a index here for that bearing that is already on the axle there to seat. And so all of this goes on like this. If the axle was in place, that'll sit in there like that with the axle sticking out. And then you mount your caliper here. And then, uh, the, of course, the rotor goes onto the axle itself. Now, let's get into the rotors and the calipers here. Now, you're probably looking at this saying, wow, those look a lot like the ones that are on the front. And that's because they are exactly the same ones that go on the front. Now we, to be honest with you, because I don't lie to you guys, when we ordered this stuff, I did not explicitly think about this. I did not think about how nice it would be to have the same rotor and the same caliper front and rear. Turns out, because the styles that we went with and everything, it worked out that way. This is the exact same caliper, it's the exact same rotor, it's all the part numbers that you guys saw earlier. Those are all going to be 
it, that's really going to be super useful because it, we only have to have one rotor. You know, if, if we need to change a rotor or something like that, if we have, you know, if we needed to have one here on the shelf or something, if we wanted to do that, we can have the same one and it's going to fit no matter where we need it on the car. Same thing goes for the calipers. For maintenance, ease of use, ease of parts, you know, the just all around easiness of it, it's gonna be really, really nice and it's gonna work out super well this way. So if we're gonna do a direct comparison like we did on the front, so you can see these are the Wilwood rotors that were on the back of this thing. Also very similar in the style, it was a two piece rotor, has the kind of a, has the hat and then you have the actual rotor itself. But with the Wilwood stuff, you have the bolts and then you have to safety wire these in. Now again, because of, you know, this is, this works extremely well, absolutely nothing wrong with this, very safe way of doing it, but having this C-clip back here just simplifies things so much. This is going to retain everything, it's going to hold it in place, it's got a lot of surface area in, in contact with these notches, and that big C-clip holds this unit together. If you ever have to change the rotor itself, pop the C-clip, put a new rotor on it, and you're back in business, you don't have to go through this whole bolting and safety wire process. Again, absolutely nothing wrong with this at all. Very, very functional. This is just going to be a little bit easier for maintenance and things like that. Same thing for the calipers, honestly. You know, if you look at it like this, this is the Wilwood. It was a four piston caliper. And if you look at this strange one, not a massive difference in design. Very, very similar, gonna work very well. Again, these calipers have just sat here on the shelf for 30 years. Didn't really want a chance going through them and trying to rebuild them and potentially have some sort of issue. And like we said earlier, because of the use of all the other strange parts, we went ahead and upgraded to the strange four piston caliper here also and then that is going to basically wrap up all the parts so we've talked a lot about weight savings on this car and what we're trying to do to do that and me and dad got to talking about it hey this might be a really good place to let's do a direct comparison between the weight savings of or if did we get any weight savings as we really don't know did we get any weight savings by going with this new strange stuff versus the old wheelwood so just like we did with the titanium bell housing, we're gonna break out the scales and we're gonna do a direct comparison. We're gonna pull all the parts off the front and then all the parts, new stuff from the front, do a measurement and then on the rear as well and just see how it shakes out. All right, we're ready to throw the old calipers up on the scales. Let's be honest, the chances of the front brakes being lighter than the old front brakes is pretty slim. And the reasoning is because we went from a two piston caliper right here, this really small caliper, to a four piston caliper. So this is one of those situations where it's not just about weight savings, it's about performance, right? We wanted the four pistons to have a better brake system. So that's what we're doing here as an upgrade, but it's still interesting to kind of know where we land on this. Let's turn our scale on here. It's at zero. Now we can take our rotor. That has the bearing and the seal and everything in it. Set it on here. Set the caliper on here and the caliper mount as well. And that right there, that whole assembly is 10.2. So that's one side. So it means the front brakes are roughly 20, 20 and a half pounds. And now we've got the strange stuff all collected up here. Turn our scale back on. That's at zero. There's the rotor. The hub with the bearings and the seal. Five lug studs and washers. And then the four piston caliper. And the brake pads. Should have caliper mounts. Oh yeah, that's true. So before the caliper mount, we're already at 14.2. Going in back. 14.6. So that's 4.4 pounds heavier on this side than on the, or with the new stuff. But like I said, if we measure this, I imagine a lot of this weight is in this caliper, which is double the size. It's a lot larger diameter rotor, too. So. Right, that's true. Yeah, that's true. The rotor is quite a bit bigger. So not really surprised, just an interesting to know. 4.4 pounds on one side so uh, just at r almost nine pounds heavier with the new stuff but much he much 
heavier duty stuff than what we had. So let's pull this stuff off, put the rear on here, and see what we get to. All right, now we're going to do the back, turn our scales back on. We are at zero. This is the old rotor caliper. No brake pads in here. And we won't measure the bracket on the back of this one because that already has the new ones mocked up in the mill for later dates for us to look at. Uh, so let's go ahead and throw the rotor on there. And the caliper. That puts us 9.4 on the back. Again, minus the caliper mounts. So just right at 10 again for the back. That is the old stuff. Again, scale back on, back to zero. Now these rotors are the same diameter. So there's the new rotor on there, the new caliper. <laughs> it's exactly the same, 9.6. I told you guys earlier, if you looked at the design of this stuff, it is extremely similar. So we're seeing on the rear here, 9.6. Uh, so it's a wash. That's exactly the same uh, in the rear. And just to reiterate one more time, this isn't a major difference, right? We've got about nine pounds difference uh, sitting on the front spindle. Uh, so uh, on the two front spindles. So, I mean, it's really not anything massive difference. We're just curious about what we're going to end up doing. And at the end of the day, our brake system is way better on the front and the rear uh, as far as just being new and with the front with the front rope with the front caliper being a four piston versus the two piston uh it's one of those trade-offs where you get a better brake system uh, with just a little bit more weight all right guys that's going to pretty much wrap us up for this week i just wanted to take a little time talk about the new components that we have and then next week we're going to dive into it because honestly there's already a little bit of a modification that we're going to have to do to this new stuff so i hope you guys join us next week see what that is um and uh, we appreciate you guys very much for watching. Hope you learned something. Hopefully, uh, this is all going to work exactly like we want it to. Uh, so we'll, next episode, we'll start bolting everything together, kind of getting an idea of doing some mock-up. Uh, so if you don't care, hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this. Uh, and also follow us on social media. We're putting up stuff every day like we have been for a long time now. So we appreciate everybody that's done that, followed along, and we'll see you next week.